James Kaufman, World News Report today, August 4th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. All right, to start off with, NOAA claims that we're in a G3 geomagnetic storm from an M7.4 flare that happened a few days ago. And looking at the estimated planetary KP index, which really tells us about the plasma and solar winds hitting Earth, I would tend to agree. All right, let's quickly go over this. This is UTC time. 0 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 9, uh, 9 to 12, and 12 to 1500 UTC time. Now, again, centrally, this would be, if anyone cares, 7 to 10, 10 to 1, 1 to 4, 4 to 7, and then 7 to 10 in the morning, central time here in the U.S., this is a better look at the KP index. We have a geomagnetic disturbance. Actually, that's a storm here, a G1. And that came in uh, from 6 to 9 UTC time. Then we have our 12 to 1500 UTC time. It's going to be a G3 storm, followed by what looks like a G2 KP63 solar storm. So we have had our hands very full for the day. Let's see if this all lines up using our Discover and ACE satellite data. All right, this is to verify that NOAA has come out with a warning indicating we're having a strong geomagnetic storm and it's reached levels of G3 KP7, KP7, see here at 1449, this is 1459 up here, which would be one minute, one minute before they actually entered the data for our KP index, which ended at 1500 UTC time, if you may recall. So we're going to be really interested in 1459 UTC time. Now, what are the effects? There are no effects. There should be Aurora Borealis, and that should come fairly low into the United States, northern tier, northern states. Uh, if not, well, we'll have another discussion at that point. Now, over to our Space Weather Prediction Center, which is laughable, to say the least. They guesstimated the storm was inbound for yesterday, and they would reach about 30 centimeters cubed and thought it would be a G2 geomagnetic storm with solar winds going up to about 500 kilometers per second. And see if we can play that so we can see the coronal mass ejection actually. Let's see if I can get that for you guys. You can see on the left the coronal mass ejection impacting Earth, the central green dot there. And you can see the plasma goes up over 30 centimeters cubed, so the winds look like they're right at 500 kilometers per second. A direct hit, you can see that on the third. Well, that never happened, and today is the fourth, a full 24 hours later. Now, since NASA refuses to model any of these CMEs and NOAA's models are always incorrect. It's hard to say, but they say that this was all caused by this long-term 7.4 solar flare that actually had the sympathetic solar flare that we just did a video on. I covered that the day of on August 2nd. Now let's go over to Discover Real-Time Solar Wind Satellite and see what it has to say. Remember our first geomagnetic storm was from 6 to 9 UTC time. It's going to be from 6 to 9 right here. And 
I see our shields are down. This was the G1 KP5 index. I see the highest plasma we've got here is below space where the thresholds and solar winds are down at 340, 345. This is from 6 to 9, and I see no abnormalities, no space weather. Uh, shields down, and they're calling this, again, from 6 to 9, a G1 KP5. Now go back and look at my charts. You know, I just did. The next one they have is from 12 to 15. 100 UTC time. They're calling that a G3 geomagnetic storm, a KP7. They were only expecting a G2, and that was yesterday. Again, the shields are up. Our plasma is at 7.65. It peaks up here at about 20 centimeters cubed. Now, that would never be a G3 geomagnetic storm where I come from. Uh, we've never seen levels, and that is the peak, right under 20 centimeters cubed, whereas they were expected over 30 centimeters cubed yesterday and predicted a G2. Here we are in a G3 geomagnetic storm with solar winds of 400 kilometers per second and plasma at 20 centimeters. Now that goes away quickly. Uh, our next storm is from 1500 right here. Uh, and we are back up there. They've given us a G2 from 1500 to 1800. You can see that the whole thing falls apart here about halfway through. The plasma is back down to 2. But the solar winds never went up to 500 or anywhere close to 500 kilometers per second. Here they're below 400 this entire time. So we had two small peaks here, right at, there's a 22, right at 20 centimeters cubed. That was all within this little period of plasma right here. And this is the six hours of G3, G2 geomagnetic storms. Now, uh, using all of my past experiences, I've never seen 20 centimeters uh, cubed of plasma cause a G3 followed by a G2 geomagnetic storm. I believe that NOAA NASA is reaching super duper hard, and that is evident when you look at the other KP indexes not indicating as strong of a storm during this time period. Let's take a look. Now, looking at that data, I can go for the Fredericksburg. That would be a G1 for six hours. That would be about right. I could even push myself to go for the college index, knowing it usually reacts stronger. That would be a G1 followed by a G2. But I have a very, very hard time seeing this G3 storm and the G2 storm next to it. We will go back and look at the G2 that's already been printed. Uh, this is running a little bit behind. This would be the very first time the estimated planetary index showed the strongest plasma impact or the strongest solar wind and plasma impact that I can remember, period. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Let's go look at that KP index because it actually has another bar already posted. So these are geomagnetic disturbances here. This is our G1, this is our G3, and this was just posted, our G2. So they're saying that the 20 centimeters of plasma caused a G3 and G2 geomagnetic storm over six hours with winds under 400 kilometers per second. I'm having a hard time with this one, guys. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. It looks like Noah and NASA are reaching, trying to make a much bigger deal of this small coronal mass ejection impact than it should. Let me know if what you see, or what I see, you see. Share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible.
in bizarro world.